Hi everyone, today we're going to dive into a crucial yet often overlooked topic in legal processing, which is redacting court filings. So redaction failures are more common than you think and using traditional methods like black text over information doesn't actually protect your underlying data. So as a family or criminal lawyer, it's really important to safeguard your clients sensitive information and we'll be taking a closer look at using tools like Redactable. Let's get started. In Redactable on the project section, I've created two projects, family law and criminal law. We'll first redact documents in the criminal law folder, starting with this plea agreement. So select the three dots, then click on redact. We want to try out the categories feature first, so we'll click categories. And then from the right-hand side here, we want to select dates and times, full name, last name, companies, um, addresses, ages, ETC. And so Redactable has a pretty extensive list of things to pick from. Then we hit search. You'll see that Redactable has gone through the document and it has selected the information that falls under the categories that you would like to redact. I need to point out that um, even though you've exhausted the categories of information that you want to redact, Redactable will still go through the document and suggest other information that you may want to redact. In our case, it has picked up anything that is uh, court or um, government related. So here it's picked up Supreme Court and it's also picked up um, United States government. Once you're happy with everything that it's suggested, you select all items and then hit redact. These gray text here indicate that um, Redactable is going to redact the information under these text box. And then you've pretty much um, redacted that information. Since this is a court document and there may be other information that you'd like to redact, which aren't included in the categories, such as what your client is being charged with, um, say pleading guilty to corruption, ETC, or the sentence duration, you can always... Um, redact that information either by using manual redaction like this, or you can uh, draw redactions on like that. If you want to preview a redacted document, you have to click redaction preview. And then as you can see, these black text box here is the information that will be redacted. Um, I just missed this. There you go. And then once you're happy with that, you can um, finalize your redaction and then you can download the redacted file. So this is what your redacted document will look like once you've redacted all the information. The yellow was just my highlighting. I wanted to point out uh, what information I wanted to redact. And let's say the color of the redaction matters to you. You can always edit that here on redaction colors. Let's say you wanna select red, select red, save, and then it will apply that color to the entire document. Other cool features that you may want to use include the redaction reason feature, where you can click on a redaction and leave a reason for redacting information so that a team member is kept in the loop. So um, I'll click on one of the redaction reasons. I'll click on confidential. And then as you can see, it will write confidential on top of the redacted text. You can also apply that to all the redactions and then it will make all those edits. You don't have to do that individually. If you want to provide a little more context for whoever's going to review the documents, like a coworker, you can always add comments. And then you'll have a trail of all the comments, responses, and um, what's been resolved, what hasn't been resolved on this right-hand side here. And I also want to point out that these comments won't appear on your finalized document. So there's no need to um, delete each one of them before you hit redact. They'll automatically be removed for you. I like that the comment feature eliminates the need to send such comments as emails to colleagues and then keeping track um, of the back and forth with those colleagues. And then it, it eliminates the need to delete all the comments before you redact your document. So we're good to go now. You can click finalize redaction, download file, this is what our finalized redacted document looks like. It's got all the information redacted, confidential or reason for redaction um, on top of the text, and all the comments have been removed. Please note that the information under the redactions have been permanently deleted, which is not necessarily the case when you use PDF readers and editors. So using a tool like this, particularly in criminal law cases, protects your client's personal and sensitive information. This is just one court document 
be redacted with criminal law court documents, unredacted personal information, such as like names, addresses of victims, witnesses, or confidential informants can lead to unintended consequences. So people will find people's information, then they'll start harassing witnesses or harassing people who are part of um, legal proceedings. So it's crucial that we shield such details, especially when minors or victims of sensitive crimes, um, such as assault or domestic violence are involved. If you're looking for your redaction certificate, you can go back to the homepage, go back to the document that you just redacted, and now um, a downloadable certificate will now be available. And this is what it'll look like. And it will also contain a redaction history. Now let's look at a family law document in the family law project file. So we go back to our projects, we click on family law projects, and then um, this is a divorce decree that we want to redact. So imagine you're handling court documents where you need to redact the names of litigants, the identities of minors, and details pertaining to the case. Before we um, go into the features, I just want to show you that I've highlighted in yellow the information that I'd like to redact. I'll explain to you in a moment why I've highlighted in yellow. I've intentionally um, left out the date of the judgment. So let's test out the redaction wizard. So um, we just click redaction wizard. Auto. And so what it does is that it will go through the entire court document and then it will pick up information that it think needs redacting. So people's addresses, people's bank statements and cards and information, if there are minors involved or people involved in general. It will pick up people's first names, second names, addresses, etc. So the wizard has picked up 24 suggestions and then you can now approve what information you want redacted. So the reason why I had highlighted some of the information in yellow is um, I wanted to test out to see if it could pick up um, what information needs to be redacted. It didn't look at the yellow text and then decide that needs to be redacted. It, it was just um, for me to show you that it will pick up that kind of information. And then whatever you've intentionally not um, selected, it will point out as a suggestion. So here, date of judgment has been selected. And then um, the judge's name has been selected as a suggestion. After the redaction wizard has made suggestions, you can approve the suggestions by ticking these boxes here, or you can just select all and then redact all 24 items. Once you've approved the suggestions, you can finalize your redaction and then you can download your file. This is what our file will look like. The information has been redacted. Here we didn't select any reasons on top. Um, there's no need to in this case, but you could always do that if you'd like. And that's pretty much it. You can automate and then streamline your redaction process using the redaction wizard. And speaking of automation, um, let's say you're looking for your redaction log. You go back to your home page and then you click redaction log tab here. And then um, a log of all your redactions will appear. So we did changes in the family law project, the criminal law project. And then it will um, let you know which version of that redacted document you're referring to. And then you can always download a copy, send it out for email. And if you want to collaborate with um, your coworkers, simply hit the team member section here. And then you can invite a team member to collaborate on a document and share your redactions with them. So that's it from me, guys. Um, remember, improper redactions can have severe consequences. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks, everyone. Catch you on the next one.